beside Meghan and Harry walk hand in hand on Australia's Fraser Island as they meet the locals and she cradles her growing bump after the prince explored rainforest on his own. Prince Harry and Meghan held hands as they walked along a jetty on picturesque Fraser Island after the couple were reunited after spending the day apart. The pregnant Duchess of Sussex had skipped today's royal engagements to take a well-earned break at the exclusive Kingfisher Bay Resort. Looking summery in a Reformation maxi dress and brown leather lace-up sandals, pregnant Meghan was glowing as she arrived by car to meet Prince Harry, having spent the morning at their hotel recuperating from the heavy schedule of the first week of their Commonwealth tour. And it looked as if the morning's rest had done her the world of good as she appeared happy and relaxed cradling her baby bump when she took a stroll with her husband before meeting well-wishers. A royal aide said she took a break from engagements because of a tiring few days. The aide added, We were concerned about the road on the island which are incredibly bumpy and uncomfortable for anyone, let alone a pregnant woman. But the Duchess was very keen to rejoin the Duke at the last engagement of the day to greet the people of the island. Harry arrived at Kingfisher Bay Jetty by boat, having just visited the historic Mackenzie's Jetty nearby. After Meghan had greeted him at the end of the pier, the couple walked down together to meet the waiting crowds, hand in hand. They were greeted by the Premier of Queensland before stopping to watch a Butchola people dance group on the beach, surrounded by cheering well-wishers. They stopped to chat to Eliza Vich, 10, and Grace Homerman, 8, who caught their eyes with a sign that read, Harry and Meghan check us out. They told the couple how they had held a royal wedding party to celebrate their marriage back in May. Oh my goodness, how sweet of you, exclaimed Meghan. As she left, the Duchess remarked, in a thoughtful nod to their sign, and now I have checked you out. The Duke was also taken by a sign reading Ranga's Rule, an Australian slang reference to his ginger hair. Jada Quinn, 9, said, my dad is Aranga and I'm a little bit Aranga and he appreciated the sign. Her sister, Ella, 12, said, It was a bit overwhelming. I started to cry a little bit. She was so kind and she shook my hand. Julianne, Ebony and and Lily Reed gave her a homemade baby changing mat. The expectant couple appeared utterly delighted by it. Does it have koalas on? asked Harry. Indeed it did, as well as every other notable native Australian animal. They have got to the be the most beautiful couple I have ever met," said Lily. Meghan also bent down to speak to Noah Line Walk, 85, Fraser Island's oldest and longest living resident at 45 years and counting. She asked me since I was local what I would suggest she have for tea. Mrs. Walk recalled, Seafood, of course. I told her, Oh, I'll have to give it a try, she said. Mrs. Walk also recalled how she had got to meet the Queen on her first visit to Australia in 1953-54. Andy Joyce, 87, told Meghan that although her name was Joyce Owen, everyone called her Auntie. I told her a story about my father, which she loved, and I wished them every happiness in the world with their baby. She said thank you and that they were so happy. Earlier the Duke of Sussex took a separate boat to the island and took part in a traditional welcome to country smoking ceremony to ward off evil spirits by members of the Butchola people, the traditional owners of the island, which they call Kukuri, meaning paradise. Aaron Henderson and Darren Blake wafted smoke from a bucket of burning paper bark and blue gum leaves towards him. While songman Fred Bulaney Ulione called out to their ancestors and tapped out a rhythm with a pair of bar gone, killer boomerangs, traditionally used for hunting. Prince Harry took off his shoes and had his feet brushed with leaves during the indigenous ceremony and later walked in the shallows of Lake Mackenzie, splashing his face with the cool, clear water. He also watched indigenous dancers and gave an address as he unveiled a plaque for the dedication of the forests of Kukuri to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy, which raises awareness of indigenous forests. This is actually the second time this plaque has been unveiled, which I know is highly unusual. The first time was by my father, the Prince of Wales, in Bondeburg earlier this year when he was visiting. I now have the privilege of unveiling it in situ. Prince Harry said in his speech, I know that my father came to Kukuri in 1994 for a day off during a royal tour so he has an appreciation of the importance of this place. Luckily we are both highly skilled when it comes to unveiling plaques. The Queen's Commonwealth Canopy is an opportunity for the Commonwealth to unite to protect one of the world's most important natural habitats, forests. 
42 out of the 53 countries are now taking part and I hope that others will join soon. The program is committed to raising awareness of the value of indigenous forests and to saving them for future generations. Put simply, without trees and forests, we don't survive. It is a symbiotic relationship and one that so many people still fail to realize. As you all know too well, Kari means paradise, and that is certainly what we've experienced today surrounded by the towering Kauri pines, 1,000-year-old satinay trees and ancient giant ferns. It is up to us now to protect this paradise together, not just because it looks beautiful, but because it is an essential part of our existence, and will continue to be for our children and their children's children. The Duke of Sussex was left blushing after a pensioner told him he was much better looking in person at the plaque unveiling. Sassy Mally Clark, 72, called out to the royal as he attended a ceremony on the island in the Pyle Valley rainforest, with the father-to-be looking at his notes and saying I'll take that as a compliment. Asked by Mail Online why she said it, Mally, a Butchula elder, said afterwards, because he is. He is such a handsome man. He will stay in hearts and minds forever. Prince Harry, 34, was without his wife, the Duchess of Sussex, who was resting because of her pregnancy. The pair traveled to Queensland together from Sydney for the next leg of their marathon Commonwealth tour on a military flight on Monday morning, before the royal couple went their separate ways. The Duke took the barge to the island, which was reportedly refurbished ahead of the occasion, while the Duchess, dressed in a maroon, polka dot dress by in other stories, arrived on a whale watching vessel. She then remained at their hotel while he traveled into the rainforest. Aides insist Meghan is not sick but simply tired. And the bumpy terrain of the World Heritage Island, the largest sand island in the world, simply isn't suitable for an expectant woman. The Fraser Island rainforest is home to the island's satinay trees which, known for their hardiness in water were used to build the London docks in the 1930s. The island has a total of 206,970 acres of protected forest and some trees are more than one, oh, oh years old. The Duke gazed up in awe at the 1,000-year-old satinay trees as he was led into the forest to a clearing around a sacred spirit tree. Butchola Land and Sea Ranger Conway Burns explained, When we die, we go through an initiation. Our spirit goes through our body and through our sacred lakes and up to the sky. It returns to our people in these trees, Burns explained. It's great to be standing here, where our people stood hundreds of years ago. This is the best way to see these trees, the Duke said, standing tall and not logged and chopped. Crowds had lined up along the Kingfisher jetty to catch a glimpse of the couple as they stepped off their boats with both the Duke and Duchess giving a wave to excited onlookers when they arrived on Fraser Island. The Duke was expected to take particular interest in his visit to the beach, as it served as a training base for an elite Z Special Force unit during World War II. The unit used the area to prepare for jungle and amphibious training ahead of missions into Asia and are credited with playing a major role in Australia's victory at Singapore Harbour. The ruins of the Z Force Commando School remain on the western side of the island, nearby the resort. Later, the Duke will head to Kingfisher Bay and walk along the jetty, hopefully with Meghan. The couple are expected to be greeted by an enthusiastic crowd of fans, as tickets to cross to Kingfisher Bay have sold out for the day. When Meghan arrived on the island, Hervey Bay Eco Marine tourists posted a photo of the Duchess on their Instagram page with the caption, Very exciting day here today at the marina. The glowing Meghan Markle passing through on her way to Curry. Fraser Island is the fourth stop on the royal couple's Australian leg of their tour, after they visited Sydney, Dubbo, in the New South Wales Central West, and Melbourne. Following their visit to Fraser Island, the royal couple are heading to Fiji then Tonga before a trip back to Sydney for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games. Their mammoth 16-day tour finishes in New Zealand.